Hey, Norman, we just saw your horse today, Danzig Moon, uh, work out. looked like he was just full of himself, exploded, you know, right at the get-go. Uh, what can you tell us about this work? What did you like and not like about it? Uh, I mean, first and foremost, I, I wasn't really thrilled with the overall time. I, we really didn't want to go that fast. But with that being said, two weeks out is typically reserved for our big work to make sure that he's ready and full of energy. It just happened that, like you said, he was full of himself, and he got away from the pony. As soon as he got away from the pony, he took off with Julian, and he, he rattled off some pretty quick fractions. And, um, you know, he's a fast horse. They, they work fast sometimes. Say, so a horse full of energy, it's a good problem to have right now, two weeks in. So. I think it, it you know, and it's a testament that I, it, I think it shows that it, the bluegrass didn't take too much out of him, and right. we still have a you know, a good horse going into the first Saturday in May. Well, that's interesting. This horse really seems, that been the following since this debut at Keeneland, had a good race here at Churchill and a, a maiden uh, special weight broke it at the Gulfstream. Comes back after the layoff, goes into the Tampa Bay Derby. The boy that moved from the Tampa Bay Derby into the um, Bluegrass Stakes, it, it looks like he's just figuring it out. What would you attribute that big difference between that performance at Tampa Bay and the... Hey, um, well, just overall, I think the horse Physically has always been a, a talented horse. I think mentally it's taking him a little longer than you know some of our other precocious horses, and um, so that's so. So from his from moving forward from two to three, I think mentally he figured it out. The Tampa race is a throwout. He just hated the racetrack. He came back. He had cuts all over his legs. Pretty indicative that you know he didn't handle the racetrack that like he would normally do. And then the bluegrass is a more of a true indicator of his ability. And for us, it showed that in terms of the maturity, that the way he distributed his energy during that bluegrass uh, stakes race, that just seemed very conducive. A lot of horses who have their final prep, he had that nice in touch with the field, obviously early on, but had a lot of late pace. Um, does this horse want a little more distance? I think he does, and I think he'll get a pace scenario um, that he'll that will make that that late surge much more effective. Um, I think a lot of people are kind of playing down Carpe Diem and the bluegrass in general, but I think I think Carpe Diem's a serious horse, sure. and I have a lot of respect for him, and I, I'm very proud to even have ran that well against him. So um, I, I just look forward to getting a chance to, to run in the derby. This derby field looks like it's very uh, uh, packed with pressure types. So where do you see, um, when you sit and look at that 20-horse field, where do you see Danzig Moon sitting in that race? I'd say, you know, late second pack, right on early in the third pack, just sitting, biding time while the other ones are kind of tiring themselves out and hopefully tiring themselves out enough where we can really explode late. You know, we've ran, he'll be our third starter if he makes it, and I really truly believe, or we truly believe, that he, he's probably going to be our best shot yep. so far. And, um, you know, it's a very, very tough field. It's the way the Derby should be. But you can never overlook anybody in these type of things, and uh, he's doing well, so uh, we're excited to run him.